Hello everyone, welcome back here for game number two on the Bravo stream. Once again, it is me, myself, and I, Morgan Dunn. Joined this time, though, by a good friend, one of the favorite guys to bring in the cast with, Cruz and Spaz. Cruz, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good. I mean, I don't think enough people ask you back. How you doing tonight, Morgan? You know, it's been going well. A nice clean 3-0 to kick things off with a lot of exciting moments. In between, we got to watch the craziness that is the alpha stream right now, crossing 10K viewers from the top page of Twitch. And I mean, yes, I'm a little salty. I'm a little jealous. I wish I was over there, but we'll continue to bring the hype and the entertainment over here to the Bravo stream because they don't know what they are missing right now with you and me, Cruz. Absolutely not. The duo's back. We're going to we're gonna get some good cast in tonight. I mean, honestly, this match, it's looking like it's uh, going to be a, uh, it could be, it could end up being a really interesting match. This one's a coin flip. So map or game number two here on the stream is going down between Utica College versus Bryant and Stratton College of Albany. And we were looking at their stats and their records up to this one. And first first take, we thought it was going to be Utica comes through, just wipes them. They're two and two. The Bobcats of Bryant are 0 and 4. You look at that, you think this one's an easy wash. It's 3 0. But suddenly you dig a little bit deeper, and Bryant has only played some of the top teams. They played Rutgers Black. They played CU Ravens, both of which just played each other on the alpha side of things. They went against NJIT, who played Rutgers to a game five. So it feels like maybe these stats are a little bit lopsided for Bryant because they've been playing the top dogs for Utica's kind of been down in the doldrums a bit. I think this could get interesting. Yeah, this, this one definitely can. If, if we're like, if you look at stats, it's like, Oh no. When you take your first glance at this for sure. But like you said, the Bobcats have literally played four of the top six teams in the division right now. So They've gone through all the hardships, and now what they're going to have to do is really, if they want to have a chance at making this top half of the split to end this first uh, this first split before we start the second one, they're really just going to have to win out from this point on as well. Much of mm-hmm. much the same of yesterday, what we had going on on the Alpha stream. It's very much so the same for the Bobcats today. And if you're the Utica Esports, now that you're playing again one of the teams that is more so towards the bottom of this list, it's another absolute must win for them as well today. Yeah, I mean, what's there for the Bobcats is everyone else fighting for those final spots in the top split. They have yet to play those great teams, which means you might be able to sneak in there. Let's really quickly run down who is actually playing for these squads. On the side of America, it is Cyber Polish Prince, Cosmic Shots, and Divin. And then you take through the away team as we load here into map number one on Crossroads. Yeah, and so for uh, for the Bobcats, it's going to be Galaxy, Gluttony, uh, Wumi, and TD going up for them. And I mean, like we said, we were looking into this. The stats are not looking great right now for the side of the Bobcats coming into these games. They are 0-12 in map count. But you know what? They might be able to surprise some people today. Let's hope for a good matchup here. Yeah, I'm entirely locked in to this initial break on P1. Who comes out hot right now from the side of the Bobcats? If they can get there early with these SMGs, start slaying and show what you can do against some of the lower talent in this division, all of a sudden, my opinions on this map might switch. But early on, I feel like you could still have that lead. Divin going to be the first one around the corner, picks up the first kill onto Gluttony, and right behind him, Cosmic Shots gets Galaxy. Not able to break the hill on either side, quite yet Divin continuing to try and hunt him down the lone man standing while the rest of his team fights for these spawns and he seems to be doing just fine thus far already three and oh and no one from utica's gone down yeah great start for utica so far they are popping off towards this middle map and really they hold the spawns as well for p number two as well so off to a fantastic start here and it's still going to be diving just in the middle of the map and he is just loading up on time at the moment Already 20 seconds going the way of Utica. They could probably hold on to the majority of the rest of it if he continues to slay out the way that he is. Middle map. Oh, I thought he was about to catch another two piece there. Not going to be the case, but it's going to be up to Gluttony now. Up top, he's going to have to push through the back and he's going to have to try to pick up some kills over here. 
Yeah, finally gets a kill at the top of scares for himself onto Cosmic Shots and rotates over to P2. But right now, you are seeing the slaying power of Utica coming out early as all their members are heavily positive. Gluttony there does find a nice drop shot onto Cosmic Shots. Turns around to watch the doorway as Galaxy chases down a kill for himself. Can't knock down Divin. And the kills continue to flow in Utica's favor. But the time gets evened back up as the Bobcats know it is not about the KDs when it all comes down to it. It's just where you can control they are sticking close in this game yeah so what utica did really good there was even though they have the spawns they ended up losing a lot of that early time because the bobcats were able to push on in through the front grab a lot of the time there but now you're gonna see utica they were able to pick up the probably now this rest of this the rest of this trap time i'm gonna assume they're gonna be able to pick up here as they now look to head over towards this p3 hill and they're gonna be set up in the back once again so spawns going their way this should uh and they should be able to get onto this hill early. And look at what gun TD's using. Has the far in his hand right there. I was wondering what that symbol even was because you never see it come through. Whenever someone goes a little bit off meta with their weapon choices, that's so much pressure onto them to come out big and just getting shut down by diving around the corner. Gets one, gets two, wants to finish off the third and finds it. 14 and three for the man to kick things off as Utica continue to steamroll through their opponents in the gunplay. But it is all down to how Bobcats can and rotate if they can find this push for spawns they just might be able to keep this one close yeah and i mean if you're looking at kds right now you're definitely looking at Wumi. he's gonna have to pick it up send that 0 and 9 to start this game you're gonna have to heat up man if you want this team to come back in the game at the moment galaxy also that's the team captain for the side of the bobcats in at 4 and 11 make that 5 and 11 now but still just hasn't been a great start for them here they're just not shooting the way that you would hope that they would and i mean that that mp5 gonna come into handy there as well so Nice little two shots in from Cosmic Shots there. And they're going to be holding around a 60-point lead as we start off this next hill. Yeah, and you start looking at the streaks. Cosmic Shots had five for himself, but taken down their very important kill to come through and prevent any score streaks from coming in. Cyber going to hold on to these spawns around the boulder. Gets two, runs out of ammo. So Diamati comes out and doesn't get punished for it. Somehow still managing to stay alive as the only person from Utica that up the scoreboard is polished prince but can you even blame him when his teammates are taking everybody off the map now he comes through with a big double kill and for the bobcats what do you even do to answer at this point i mean you just gotta start winning gunfights at this point i know as crazy as that sounds to stay and as basic as that is but you really just do wumi is still yet to pick up a kill here and i mean you're used to donuts maybe sometimes in search and destroy but definitely not in respawn and it is definitely hurting this team right now him not being able to pick up any of these trades only seven seconds left on this hill and again polish prince going to pick up a big two-piece middle map and they look to head over towards p1 again and i mean a huge lead to start this game 120 seconds after the first set of rotations the moment i call him out polish prince comes through and a seven kill streak and finds that artillery strike completely heating up when his team needed him to but the man the myth the legend is diving 23 and 9 right now completely dominating the map oh and 16 as he said for Wumi, showing the difference between the top and bottom of this lobby we were giving a lot of credit to the bobcats wondering if it was because of them playing those top teams that the stats weren't quite where they wanted to be but Utica is showing they might be one of these top teams as well putting them on here early up 130 points as we get through the first rotation of hard points yeah and I mean another good thing to note is because Utica has played those tops teams so early now they have a chance to really just win out here as well and get a lot of get a lot more points on the board and probably have a good chance of finishing towards that top half of of the division and really get into that upper echelon of the uh for the next split so good looks for them and i mean bobcats man this has just been a very rough game so far yeah, again, it's his kill coming to Cyber over the top of this bridge. Already has found three, just holding that one angle. And with 190 points past, Utica are already looking at Hill 3 to be the end of it. Very close to closing out this game as Cyber picks up another one onto Galaxy and Divin trying to find these kills inside of the point. Rotations coming through now. Two over the top, two over the bottom for the Bobcats. Galaxy finds himself a man and is able to finish off that kill for two quick ones in favor of the Bobcats. They take control, but they give up spawn for it so you're starting to wonder was that just gifted over by Utica Cosmic Shots coming back in with a big triple kill up to 24 and 9 as Divin gets back in on the site and everything continues to rumble and roll downhill for Utica
Yeah, they're absolutely coming out and saying, no, we're not giving anything away for free right now. As they as they come back, they store back in. They're going to come back in again here and drop the player off of the hill. So, I mean, 217 to 51. One thing I think that we need to talk about a little bit as well is Diamond. 27 and 13, and he's definitely had a good game here so far. But not just 27 and 13, 216 on the hill as well. Getting a lot of engagements and playing the objective, that's huge for your team. Yeah, and it goes back to how he played the initial break on P1. He is in there contesting and taking these firefights to get them. He's not doing a roaming slaying style. It's just the one man just hoping people come through these doorways against him so he can add to his stats. A little awkward timing on the reload. Going to fall down to Gluttony, who is the top man for the Bobcats thus far. He needs to continue rolling to give his team a bit of momentum before we head over into this SND as he is stuck inside the point alongside Wumi. There goes the first kill down for Cosmic shots but answered by two the other way on the bobcats very good hold on p3 thus far they're gonna force at least one more yeah great hold from them there that's the best hold we've seen them have so far today wumi picks up three kills now maybe starting to heat up a little bit here but i mean it's just they, they gotta get in and now this is gonna be the tough part they don't have the the rotation set up over here diving gonna hop on into the hill and utica esports has the exact hold that they want to have in this game and they are only 20 seconds away from winning yeah, final push now to see what happens. Bobcats, two members go down in quick succession. Cyber wants to find himself a third. Is around the top side. Woomy gets stolen away. Uh, an artillery strike coming down just to prevent the attack as the last five seconds are coming here. And now there is just no chance as Gluttony falls. Everything gets cleaned up. And Utica Esports win emphatically 250-95 to 95 over the Bobcats. Man, I was really, really hoping that the stats were lying to us and we were going to get a really close series here. I, I guess we still have a chance, but I was looking at those stats before the game, seeing Wumi's point six hard point KD and really hoping that that was just a, some sort of an error in the system, but it doesn't look like it is. What did he finish with there? I think three, maybe, maybe four. Yeah, it was the not it? the best for himself not. as he was rolling around. I mean, I think what I would have to say when we are giving these guys something to look at when they check the VODs back is there were too many moments for the Bobcats where they double stacked on top of each other, where it was just two guys taking the same angle. And for Utica, you just hold down the trigger until they both get knocked away. That many does like that happened over and over and over. And that is really really where the KDs can start falling away from you. Later on, they had a very good hold on P3 to try and get some score back into their favor, but it was too little too late. And Divin taking control of the lobby. Divin absolutely took control of the lobby. He had a great game for himself there. I believe he finished somewhere around 31 and 16. And it was just a really good game coming out of him there. It really just took the Bobcats and put them to bed, if I'm being honest. But... I mean, one thing I think we got to really touch on as well is just how good Utica played those rotations too. They just, mm -hmm. they, they were always the first team to every hill. It felt like minus the P3 on the second rotation, but besides that you're, they're setting up and they weren't getting broken. Even, even on the first, I think it was our first set through on the second hill. They, uh, the early time went the, went to the way of the Bobcats, but Utica stormed right back in there, got their spawns back and were able to hold on to a good amount of time. Yeah, but let's try and look forward, try and keep a hopeful mindset on this one for those Bobcats. And we're heading over into Garrison on the SND. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think that either team's play style really lends itself to this map? And what I mean by that is, are Utica just going to run forward and try and slay? I hate to be the person to say I think that Utica is going to run forward and just slay, but I really do. I, I Looking at KDs and stuff again, it does look like S&D seems to be one of the weaker modes for this Bobcats team, especially when you look through their matches. Like, they, they lost S&D 06 to, to Rutgers Black. They lost to NGIT Esports. It was it was a 6-1. Like, then they lose 2-6. Then they get 6-0 on raid. Like, it has not been very good of a game mode for them. So they, they're definitely going to need to pick it up. I think one thing I would say, if I was to give any advice to uh, – to the side of them is maybe just slow it down slow down your gameplay try to catch people off guard just try to get any little bit of a pick that you can just so you can really just try to bring up your level of gameplay it's just it's so hard to win gunfights when you're constantly sprinting at people maybe if you just slow down you can catch a couple more people get a couple more kills and maybe that might be able to turn the tides and you can start winning a couple of these games 
Yeah, but we'll have to wait and see as we wait to load into the second map of the matchup. We're going to send things over to a quick break for a second as the lobby gets finished off. But stick around. We'll be right back into the action shortly. Able to pull it out here. Going into Garrison, it looks like we're already into round one here. It's going to be Woomy. Starting off with the man, the myth, the legend himself. And he's just going to be watching over towards the lights. And we'll see if he can find a pick to start this game off. Yeah, Polish Prince going to get himself first blood and first man to die in the round is TD. Still trying to rock interesting guns as I see the QBZ in Gluttony's hands. I guess if it's broke, try and fix it by just picking out whatever backup loadouts you might have as the Bobcats are just trying to throw interesting guns against Utica. But there's a reason people aren't running these things. It's just they don't work out the best a lot of the times versus the XM4 and the Craig 6, the 74U. You have a three gun meta right here and Polish Prince wants to show it turn the corner gets the first one or actually Cyber takes it away right in front of him and Gluttony re-challenges gets the first kill on the QBZ trying to slide across in this one versus three but the pinch about to come through turn around to spot out Cosmic gets taken down and Utica pick up round one yeah I don't know if the QBZ is becoming more meta right now but I've this is the third time I've seen it in three matches of CCL this week so Maybe it's becoming a little bit more used here and there, but definitely not your normal gun that you would be seeing in terms of AR. It's usually going to be the Krieg 6 or the XM4. But nonetheless, good defense out of Utica round one. I'm assuming we're probably going to see a B hit coming out of them here, but maybe for them as well, just use this match as practice. Maybe try hitting A a couple times here as well, but just don't give the game away by practicing too much. Yeah, Diving going to take the bomb and get very aggressive to rush over by Beak. Full sprint forward to get down inside a vent as he gets there early to check, but no one will be waiting. The defense is all set up over by the A side, possibly looking for a B side retake on the Bobcat side of things. Here comes the push now for Polish Prince forward, but these guys are just staring each other down, waiting for something to happen. Yeah, and it looks like the Bobcats are giving up so much map control here to Utica. They basically have a free plant over at B, except for Galaxy, who's the only player up here with the XM4. I'm not sure why you would put so much pressure on A when it is by far the, the least of the two bomb sites that's hit. But it's really looking like they're going to be able to push on into lights now, and they're just going to try to put this bomb down. Divin is going to fall to Gluttony there, so it's man advantage over towards the defensive side as Polish Prince picks the bomb back up, goes to challenge, and Galaxy is there as well. Bobcats now up three versus two with the bomb down in the middle of the map, trying to turn the corner for the shots is Gluttony, but it, they just do not land. He falls, and we are evened back up on the man differential. In jumps Cosmic Shots to pick up the bomb, get the plan down, and he has Cyber covering his back as TD falls, and it's all up to Woomy. Doesn't get the gun up in time and Utica clean it up retake the man advantage and go 2-0 on the rounds count and those are absolutely rounds for the Bobcats that you gotta win if you get the man advantage in search and destroy that's huge you can just play out trades from there but their teammates are so far away from them over towards the A side of the map when all the actions happening over at B they didn't even attempt to wrap in through the top of green and try to come down and help out their team it was just really unfortunate for them they, they gotta try to pull out something here yeah, I mean, we they were doing exactly what we asked for. Now you see very interesting guns across the <laughs> board. Three off meta coming through for the Bobcats. Is maybe they're the one practicing different loadouts here as uh, the QBZ, the works. FAR, and the MP5 <laughs> are all in the mix in this third round. Utica still just sticking to their classic strategies. They do the one man over by B, got the coverage of middle, and then the one person making sure no one sneaks around towards A. It's a solid defense. I don't know how you start to break it without just winning a 1v1. Yeah, they, they are set up in all the right positions. Uh, there's your 1v1 for you there. Gluttony going to drop inside vents. He wasn't carrying the bomb, though, luckily for them. But bomb does go down now. It's going to be a 2 versus 4. Make that a 1 versus 4 now for the Bobcats as they're leaving TD all by himself back in the map. Here comes TD to try and push forward far in hand. Going to get sprayed down, pinched from every direction, and just never a chance for the man. Utica Esports go up 3-0, and this is the point you start thinking about that clean sweep, about padding the stats, about really making a name for yourself in the division. They're sitting at 2-2 two two right now, but to get back up on the positive side of things, 3-2, and, and look to get on the top side out of this split one, it does make a big difference 
conference to secure yourself a guaranteed qualifier spot. Yeah, absolutely. Once once you get into that top division, you'll also be playing better teams more consistently as well. And that was something I brought up yesterday as well, is if you're playing these top teams more and more consistently, it's going to make you get even better. So if you don't qualify in the top half once we hit into split number two, even if you don't qualify in the top half, you're still getting good, consistent practice. And it, what that's going to allow you to do is once you do end up having to play in those qualifier matches, you're going to be more and more prepared for these top teams by playing the top teams more often. Here we go into round number four. Utica again going to get first blood for themselves as Galaxy gets chopped down. The defense is a little bit better set up than I think the last time. I agree with you, though. Just so much control of the map given over to Utica. They do not want to push forward. And as TD tries to challenge over the middle, you see why Polish Prince sending him back to the grave. And all of a sudden, it is a 2v4. Wumi still rocking a goose egg here. And TD the same. Trying to get onto the board as he turns this corner. Clears out Vent, but but doesn't check the top as Prince finds the shots onto Gluttony. It's the 1v4 for Wumi. See if he can knock anybody down. Has 20 seconds left on the bomb. And Diven gonna find him underneath. Hunted down. Utica go up 4-0. Utica looks good, man. Their setups are looking A1. Once they get these bombs down, they are just doing everything that they can to just make sure not even players really dropping for them here. So it's a little hard to give some analysis on because they're just really playing this so perfectly right now. They're setting up in all the right spots and it's just, it really comes down to the Bobcats. They're giving up so much map control as we keep talking about, but it's so important when it comes to search and destroy. You have to be able to get map control so you can decide whether you want to go to A or to B with the bomb or what, on defense especially, you have to be able to stop these teams from being able to go to those spots. As you can see, player number eight over here already, Cosmic Shots, he's going to be up in the top here. He's going to be contested, but he's going to be able to get the kill, get away with his life, and it's just a perfect spot to play on defense, but we don't see anybody from the Bobcats playing that spot on their defense. Yeah, and you see the trust out of the teammates. He finds that kill, and no one starts rotating across to give him back up. They know he can hold the angle, and when you run back into the rest of the squad, it is a blender of the Bobcats. Utica, five up now. Another flawless round, and they have just completely hit their stride. Polish Prince, line him up, knock him down. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think we'd be very surprised to see a full sale come out now, especially I'm, I'm fully expecting to see a, honestly a six Oh here at this point. They, they just seem so much more polished on this map. The, the Bobcats have three total kills on their side of the team on the game right now. They have two players yeah. who don't even have a hundred damage combined. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The 27 and 54 damage together is what really is a telling tale here. Galaxy, not going to see as uh, that's actually diving behind the wall. The x-ray tricked me for a second as he watches the bottom of vents. But at this point, you got to know the Bobcats haven't crossed that basically a third of the way in line on this map from defense. They are just backing up and backing up, letting Utica come in as hot as you want. And it has worked perfectly for them. Cosmic Shot's finally going to find himself first blood, the headshot onto TD, possibly ending this one with that goose egg 0 and 6 as they look to finish off off this final round yeah and i think if uh, if i was thinking of any advice maybe to the bobcats here i think i would say look at other teams how they're playing defense and learn different defensive setups because i was just saw where wumi was set up towards the back of the map and he just wasn't really in a spot where he's watching anything or doing anything and that's gonna be three quick kills there's the fourth and utica gonna be able to clean up the d offensive round there but it like like it really comes down to they just weren't watching spots that are useful to watch and search and destroy you're not seeing any players cross he was kind of just tucked in a corner back a and it, it just it doesn't make much sense to me yeah, and it's kind of that principal issue of College Cod here. When you get so many teams in, so many new teams, how do you know who's serious about it, who's grinding, who's practicing? And which of these teams are just guys that are like, hey, we all like playing Call of Duty. Let's jump in. Let's see how we do. I really feel like the Bobcats might be the latter of those two. And if they are putting in that work, it makes me feel bad to say it. But when you see Woomies just movement around the map, you're not doing those tricks. There's no slide cancels happening you're not having the crosshair placement right at head level when you turn a corner it's very slow getting the gun up it feels like that difference between someone that jumps into league play after playing pubs the whole time and they kind of get stomped versus the people that have been on that grind they've played competitive through a few different titles and they just know how it works what the rhythm is 
yeah you can you can absolutely tell that they they definitely haven't either a haven't taken the league as seriously as they should or they're just here to have some fun and i mean if that's the case good for them i'm i don't think that being able to lose the way that they have been is very fun personally but you know what if they're out here and they're having a good time that's all that matters yeah i'm gonna say like listen it's you're on stream right now it's not the 10k over on alpha but 60 people get to see your names here on twitch your family gets to tune in your friends get to see it so even if it's not the uh the result that you want in the end take a nice mindset to it and just kind of enjoy the memories and the moments while you're here yeah, and absolutely. And I mean, if they do want to get better, there's multiple things that they can do to try to get better. One, just play the game a lot more. Two, look over VODs, see where other teams are setting up, learn different setups for yourself, try to pick up some set strategies and just try to run away with it there. Maybe you guys can pick it up and get better as the year goes along as well. Yeah, and I mean, the one thing you said, I think, is the big takeaway from that first SND here and possibly the only one with how this game is rolling. Just get new defensive setups. Look at what the pros are doing. Look at what the best teams are doing because when you give up that much space on Garrison, it is a very difficult retake. Moving forward, though, map number three, the control. We're going to be sending things over to checkmate the plane and... uh, This one can get interesting. It's all going to be about, I'm wondering if Utica locks in the spawn trap onto the attacking side whenever they're on defense. If you are way ahead in gun skill, that's kind of how you turn the tide back in your favor. Yeah, I was going to say, as soon as I saw Checkmate on this, I got a little scared, Morgan. Mm -hmm. This is a map that gun skill, not having it, is going to punish you so hard. You, if you get put in that spawn trap, I, I've gotten people in that spawn trap on league play, and I'm not the greatest player. So I can tell you right now, if I'm able to kill people in that spawn trap, trust me, when you get a team of four players who are playing constantly together all the time, they are going to know what to do and they're going to be able to punish you for it. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't even feel like going for the spawn trap hurts people that much. Sometimes on garrison control, when you go for it, it feels like if you all get wiped at the same time, you have given up the B site. That is just gone. But here on checkmate, you get very aggressive. You win the initial clash and then go towards their spawns. Maybe your team gets wiped in return. There's no real place that you can rush in from the attacking side and completely dominate it the other direction. You go, always, as the defense, are going to have time to kind of reset for yourself. So I would expect very aggressive play out of Utica here. They want to finish it off here and now, and it is time loading into map number three on Checkmate. Yeah, and the most important thing is you're going to have to get people up in that top plane, probably at least two of them. You, the best way I've found so far to do it on checkmate control is you got to get a player. If you want to win these offenses, get a SMG and a AR up in the top plane. Really just try to make sure you have the, the AR up there to be able to win those long range gunfights, pick the people out of the hills and then have your sub in there to win the gunfights inside of the plane. So you guys can keep that top plane control. Yeah, it comes back on all the modes for Checkmate. It is plain control. That's where the best bomb is on SND. That's where you can see all of the different points on Hardpoint, and that is where you dominate the control here on control. Hollis Prince going to be the first one underneath. Takes a fight and wins it onto Wumi, but it's answered by a two spray out of the Bobcats as they try to take control of B. Interesting. So often you see A, the site that people hit first, but in comes this defense as Utica are actually the ones on attack. I got that backwards off of the rip. Got mixed up. It's a good stand to kick things off for the Bobcats. Yeah, great. Great start for the Bobcats. Definitely not what uh, I was expecting. Uh, And coming down to that B hit, it could just be they're trying something new. Maybe seeing how a B hit right off the back could work. And now they're going to start heading, uh, trying to head over towards this A side. But again, it actually looks like they're going to choose to hit B. Sorry. And uh, it's just going to be gluttony here. Playing his life, finessing around inside the hill. Actually going to get dropped by his teammate. Unfortunately, his TD is going to clean him up. But so far, not not a great offense from the side of Utica Esports. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not what we expected, but we've started to see this a lot. Kind of expect the unexpected on control. Teams that are getting wiped out on maps one and two are really making plays for themselves here when it gets to map number three. Looking at the live differential, all of a sudden, Utica have taken the one up, now two in the lead. It's Polished Prince and Divin leaving the way, and I don't think that is a surprise. Divin has done so much thus far. Cyber getting in with a big double kill to meet it up, and as B continues to get control, they are one 
one break away from winning this defense, but I don't know if the Bobcats have it in them. Yeah, and I, if you're the Bobcats here, you got to give up B at this point. I think you got two players on it for the side of uh, for the side of Utica, and there's a player on A, and it actually looks like they chose to drop the player on B. So A looking like it might be able to get the third tick in. A lot of players from the side of the Bobcats are very far away. They got a two stack on it right now, and imagine that's going to come through. So yes, so A is going to go through, and they only need one more tick of B, and they have a minute twenty five to do it, and they're up very big in the lives now. Watch out for Cyber on a six streak. He's about to get some kill streaks. Just a couple more heading his way and set up around the back of the plane stairs. Turning the corner off, fresh off of these spawns. Polished Prince is in, but Utica finish the round early. They go up 1-0 over the Bobcats. And so much promise off the jump here as Galaxy found himself a play of the game. But as soon as that A site got capped up and there was more time to play through, it just felt like all hope was lost. It felt like once that team kill came through bottom and they got wiped mm -hmm. off the off the second mm -hmm. or third push that Utica had, it just felt like Utica got their map control back and just never gave it up towards the complete that last half of that round. Got to give credit to Galaxy right now, seven and six, leading the way for his squad over on Utica's side. Though it is all positive or even. Cosmic shots, the lowest one at four and four. And I wonder if Cyber, who has gone zero and two to start, and then six and zero since, if he's going to be able to finish off any of those kill streaks he started in that last round. No, they don't carry over. That's what I had in my head as he gets the first blood for himself and then a trade underneath the plane. That's really, I thought the streaks did carry over. It still shows that he's on a seven. Ooh, Polish Prince oh. up the quad feed out of nowhere. A six streak for himself, and he definitely picks up a score. Sorry to cut you off, but the action just out of there in the back corner, locking down every member of the Bobcats. Absolutely, and this was the this was the spawn trap that we were so scared of them getting into, and it is, it is looking like it's about to happen here. They only have 50 seconds left, and I don't, I, I honestly, at this point, I think it's going to be tough for them to get out of their spawn in these next 50 seconds. Diving over the top, tries to splurry down on Wumi, but Gluttony right there to follow it up. Cosmic Shots keeps control of the plane, though, as big as it is, and everyone forced back in. Now Polish Prince once more. Already one highlight and can't start ticking on the next as Wumi or Gluttony around the corner knocks him down. Wumi is uh, at least on the board this time. Him and TD not going to be rocking goose eggs, but the score streak in the hands of Utica means it'll be even more difficult to get control on any of these sites. 17 seconds remaining Taken away fast as TD finds one more, and that's got to be the end of this round unless the Bobcats can hold solid right now on A. Yeah, they're able to hop on into it, but it, you're going to get reinforcements from Utica very quickly on in here. Diving going to hop on in. Teammates from the top of the plane cleaning up the rest of the kills, and with only seven seconds left, this round's looking pretty bleak for BSEA. Final three seconds coming through. That's going to be it as Cyber gets onto the board one more time. Utica Esports going up 2-0. And for the Bobcats, it is all up to how they hold this defensive side. They had a chance. It would be great for them to find a round. But again, you see right there the quad kill for Polish Prince. And it starts out with two members of the Bobcats just standing on top of each other. You can't give away doubles that easily. No, and they're just playing so well. And if you take a look at Cyber, Cyber started this game off 0-2 in the first round. And has now gone on an 11 since. streak since. He has just been unreal since they were able to get map control back in that first half. And now it's just going to be the side of Utica. They already got multiple streaks on their side. This is just, I feel like this is just a round that's going to be so tough for Bobcats to win. Yeah, pushing straight through the top of the plane goes Cyber. He wants to get aggressive towards a defensive spawn trap as the members of the Bobcats are sent back out into those respawns. You see here, Polish Prince right up there with him with the score streak. Now Cyber kind of caught out off guard by Gluttony, taken down on top of the stairs, and the Bobcats pushing by A. The three-man stack that was just capping this site so, so quickly. The contest comes through, and all three men get cleaned up. Bobcats not giving this one up too early. No, they're, uh, they're going to be able to get that tick off of A, so only going to have one tick in there. And Cyber was trying to hop on to B, but it looks like he was just a little bit of a decoy as all the rest of the players from Utica are going to spawn up, head over towards A. And it's uh, it's looking like they're going to get the second tick on here before Bobcats are able to contest. 
Sprints now behind the corner, finds that first one onto Wumi. Galaxy falls as well to Cosmic Shots opposite side of the map. Pushing through the middle of the plane goes Gluttony, but his teammate is still in trouble. TD knocked down by the 1v1, and Cosmic Shots found out by Gluttony under the sight. Gluttony continuing to try and be the man pulling his team through, but it is just too much to put on the shoulders of a single person. Galaxy right there with them, 13 and 16, but just not enough as Utica continue to fight and cap up that A site. And I mean, lives are gonna have to come into a factor at some point here with a minute 30 left in the game. It's uh, it's around a four kill lead still for the side of Utica. They're gonna be able to hop onto this. I saw a knife kill in there. I saw the Bobcats got a knife kill and you can't take that away <laughs> from them. Even if you don't win the game, it's something that always deserves the shout out here as Utica really start to lock down on the B site. Yeah, they, uh, I mean, they got the knife kill, but <laughs> the second tick's starting to come on through now for the side of Utica. And they just have to play these head glitches, pop around, get these kills. And, oh, Galaxy, going to be able to win that one, but not, unfortunately, going to be able to grab the second. Streaks coming in. Shots is still on the hill. TD going to flank in from behind, stop the tick from coming in for now. But at the end of the day, it's just too many streaks, too much pressure for the side of Utica. Finishing it off there, Utica Esports, clean 3-0 on the control, clean 3-0 in the game. And you saw, I think they will be competing for one of those last spots at the top after uh, this initial split. They will want to be in that top division. It'll be very tough once they are there. But I think with a performance like this, they're going to be able to squeak in. I think so as well. I think one thing I would say for them as well would be if they are going to be playing like teams... I would more so, I think they need to focus on control. Just looking at how that game went. If they're playing a stronger team there, those offenses are going to be a lot harder to win. And they didn't look great in their offenses against yeah. a team like the Bobcats. So definitely something maybe they should start focusing on a little bit here in the CCL. Try to get a little bit stronger on your, uh, on your control games. Because as we see many times, control really can be a swing mode. Yeah, and I mean, take the momentum from this win. Take the joy. Take the morale it gives your squad. But don't focus on it. Don't latch on to it. You got to move forward and focus on the teams that are coming up and know that they're going to be tougher matchups. I mean, to, at least for Utica's side, they've already had some highs, had some lows. They were 500 coming into this match. or now one over coming out of it. They know that they are right there in the league to fight on a fight for a playoff spot. It just depends on how well they're going to be able to keep it together going forward. They still need to play some of the best members of that division. Rutgers Black, CU Ravens, NJIT are very good teams that all could be in that top 25 if there just wasn't so much talent in the CCL this year. So a long road ahead from them, but I am excited to see where they can go going forward. Yeah, I, I think that they have definitely a shot of making the top half and being in uh, being in that higher echelon division for for the second split. It uh, it should definitely be interesting to see how the rest of the season goes for them there. But like you were saying, some of the top teams, I think that this division, this uh, this metropolitan division, is one of the highest divisions mm -hmm. right now. It seems very close on both sides of Division A and Division B. So definitely a division to keep everybody's eye out for to close this one off. And I do gotta say, Morgan, that has gotta be one of the fastest three O's I've ever seen. Oh, it was a quick one. So we now actually off of that are done with game number two. I got to give the shout out to my man Cruz coming in here, casting it with me. I know now you're going to have to back off, head back over to the green room, but I know I'll be seeing you in chat moving forward. Coming up right after this, the final game of the evening. Camber coming back onto the cast. Is, let me double check who we got. It's going to be Sacred Heart University against the University of Hartford. So I guess kind of a heart versus heart there if you want to make a rivalry out of nothing. It'll be a little bit of time as we wait for that next game to show up. But in the meantime, don't feel afraid to check out the Alpha channel. We will be showing Alpha content here on Bravo and stick around around be ready for that final game of the evening we'll see you guys very soon